Dear Ashton, I know the secrets your role model keeps for you. I heard everything. I heard the plan. In my opinion, you're just as sick as your mentor. She was 14 when we started the show. I was like 19, right? Daddy goes and goes, dude, I'll give you $10 if you French kiss her. Dear Mila, I pray you begin to process what you experienced as a child on that set. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis are receiving backlash. That's because their buddy turned convict, Danny Masterson, has been exposed and charged for who he really is. And despite being fully aware of his crimes, his friends Ashton and Mila stood by his side. So let's get into it. <laughs> We've talked about Danny Masterson and his criminal past before, but today we're going to be focusing on some of these other celebrities who have been supportive of him even though he's been found guilty. Like for example, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. They wrote letters to the court, to the judge, to say that Danny was a good guy. Following his conviction on two counts of the R word, his co-stars from The 70s Show, Ashton and Mila, reported wrote letters of support to the judge that they hoped would affect the sentencing. So there are three women who have called out Danny for harming them in his home in the Hollywood Hills between the years 2001 through 2003. Actually, Ashton and Danny worked together pretty recently, back in 2017, until he was written out of the show because he was accused of misconduct. The judge overseeing Danny's criminal case handed the actor the maximum allowable sentence. The judge was resisting calls from nearly 50 of his family, friends, and colleagues to allow him to serve his prison term concurrently rather than consecutively. This pretty much means a bunch of people were hitting up the judge asking the judge to allow Danny to serve these charges at the same time so that his sentencing wouldn't be as long, but the judge said no. Danny will be eligible for parole in roughly 25 years when he's 72 years old. It took two decades for Danny Masterson to be found guilty of The actor, best known for his role in That 70s Show, had been convicted in May of raping two women back in 2003, a jury deadlocked on a third count. Masterson and both victims were members of the Church of Psychology. There were allegations the reason it took so long was that the church prevented the victims from reporting the assaults. The women claimed once they came forward, they were harassed and threatened. The church denies the allegation. His victims testified just prior to the sentencing, calling Masterson a true coward and a heartless monster. You relish in hurting women. It's your addiction. Another saying, every time I think I'm okay, that comes back to me. So Danny is a terrible person, but let's talk about why Ashton and Mila Kunis are getting involved. They really did it to themselves, but a reporter named Megan released these letters and Ashton refers to Danny as a role model, an extraordinarily honest person. He is among the few people that I would trust to be alone with my son and daughter. Mila's letter speaks of Danny's exceptional character and tremendous positive influence on her. And it's not just these letters because Ashton has been very active when it comes to defending Danny. Ashton broke his silence on the allegations back in January 2023, telling a reporter that he would hope that his co-star would be found innocent of the charges brought against him. It was hard to swallow. I've always loved these two, and I've always respected Ashton Kutcher for the fact that he's done a lot for trafficking victims. If you haven't already seen the letters, this one is Mila Kunis' letter. You can pause to read. And this is Ashton Kutcher's letter. Well, one of the victims named Chrissy Bixler, who dated Danny Masterson from 1995 to 2000 to just posted to her Instagram stories after finding out about these letters. She was the one that the jury did not find him guilty for. She accused him of graping her while she was sleeping, but because they were together, the jury did not find him guilty. She posted this to Instagram saying, Dear Ashton, I know the secrets your role model keeps for you. Do you forget I was there? You were on speakerphone that night you called Danny on February 21st, 2001. I heard everything. I heard the plan. In my opinion, you're just as sick as your mentor. You must have put that date on purpose because if you
you look up Ashton Kutcher, February of 2001, you might remember this story. The chilling details of the murder of Ashley Ellerin and the Hollywood Ripper trial. In February 2001, Ashton Kutcher arrived to pick Ellerin up for a date, but she didn't answer the door because she had already been stabbed to death by accused serial killer Michael Gargiulo. The next day, when he learned Ellerin had been murdered, he reached out to police. He said he was worried because he put his hand on the doorknob while trying to open the front door. My fingerprints are on this door and I was freaking out. I told an officer, let me tell you what happened. Honestly, Ashton Kutcher deserves his own video. So if you guys want one, comment below. But reading Ashton's letter, he does refer to Danny as a dedicated co-worker, a role model, a friend, and they have been friends for 25 years. Over our 25 year relationship, I don't ever recall him lying to me. He's taught me about being direct and confronting issues in life and relationships head on, resolving them and moving forward. Not only is he a good friend to me, but I've witnessed him be a good friend to others and the kind of brother others would be lucky to have so he really was like hyping him up and it's just amazing that he's completely ignoring what these women have accused Danny of. Anytime that we were to meet someone or interact with someone who was on drugs or did drugs, he made it clear that it wouldn't be a good person to be friends with. He also set an extraordinary standard around how you treat other people. There was an incident where we were at a pizza parlor and a belligerent man entered who was berating his girlfriend. We had never met or seen these people, but Danny was the first person to jump in and defend this girl. Okay, so maybe Danny is, you know, somewhat of an okay person from Ashton's perspective. That does not take away that he was literally found guilty of these charges. Even though what Danny has done is truly evil, it doesn't mean that he's like evil all the time or gonna be evil to his friends like Ashton. So they really don't know. While I'm aware that the judgment has been cast as guilty on two counts of our word by force and the victims have a great desire for justice, I hope that my testament to his character is taken into consideration in sentencing. I do not believe he's an ongoing harm to society and having his daughter raised without a present father would be an injustice in itself. So uh, thank you for taking the time to read this, Ashton Kutcher. So now that this letter has been made public, people are looking at Ashton and questioning his character because how do you defend someone so actively like this. Chrissy writes, Dear Mila, I pray you begin to process what you experienced as a child on that set. Your older interviews are very telling. I encourage everyone to watch them and decide for yourself what you hear and see. Do so before they get scrubbed from the internet. I also know what happened in Toronto and after. Question, if that's what you view as a normal relationship with a big brother figure, then I feel very sad for you and I hope you consider getting into therapy. You almost forget I was there the whole time those first five years of that 70s show. I remember everything. She then reposted this tweet where it says, Ashton Danny always treated Topher badly. Topher has never liked Danny. I learned this while doing my early reporting on the then allegations, now conviction against Danny. She added to that by saying Topher was bullied by Danny Masterson and isolated by most of the cast because Danny's like a cult leader. Danny hated Topher because Topher didn't bow to Danny like his other young castmates. I love Topher. If I so much as said hi to Topher, I would be given a scolding and then ignored by Danny. It broke my heart. He was the only guy on that set with integrity and a moral compass. That's my experience. I was there. Well, she's not the only one speaking up because Topher Grace's wife also posted to her stories. Ashley writes to every great victim that is re-traumatized by witnessing society debate and focus their attention on what is going to happen to the greatest. I see you. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Danny did act like a cult leader because he is part of a big church that we're not supposed to say on YouTube because when you say this word, it suppresses the video, but a really scary church, which is like a cult. And that church was a big part of defending him and scaring off his witnesses. But let's go ahead and talk about Mila's letter. I don't understand why she and Ashton are so keen on bringing up drug use, probably because of the information in this case, but they write, one of the most remarkable aspects of Danny's character is his unwavering commitment to discouraging the use of drugs. Danny played a pivotal role in guiding me away from such destructive paths. Danny's role as a husband and father to his daughter has been nothing short of extraordinary. He prioritizes his family, education, happiness above all else, demonstrating his unwavering commitment to being a loving and responsible parent. In conclusion, I wholeheartedly vouch for Danny's exceptional character and tremendous positive influence he has on me and the people around him. Please feel free to reach out if you require any further information or clarification. Mila Gunas. The thing is, I know that these are two people who have to have very fancy and expensive lawyers. I know somebody had to have told you that these letters were public knowledge. I don't know when y'all wrote these letters. So if you didn't know that, you should have found that out when all those idiots got flamed for writing ones for the damn leprechaun to stay his ass out of jail, right? 
And for these two people specifically, I don't even know how to begin to describe how sick it is for you to build a brand where you create a foundation. The sole purpose is to fight sex trafficking and keep, you know, women and children safe from sexual predators like your friend over here, and then write a letter talking about what a great role model this man has been in order to get him a lower sentence. After you sat down and listened to five people go in detail about what he did to them, your foundation is supposed to help find, prosecute, and put in jail to say, well, you know, I never saw him do anything bad and I can't believe this and he's such a good guy. I feel like I know he's been convicted and like everybody deserves justice, but you shouldn't put him in jail for that long. Now that these letters have been made public, people are looking at Ashton and his past. And there are a couple stories that are pretty disturbing. For example, Mila Kunis once said that Danny bet Ashton $10 to French kiss her on that 70s show when she was only 14. I don't know how long this clip will exist on the internet, but it's going viral right now. Mila was quoted saying that it was like the first week of shooting. I was a 14 year old girl and I was extremely scared for my life. So. Uh, I mean, I don't know how she looks at Danny or even Ashton like as good people when she's 14 and being pushed into this. They're so focused on how the industry pushes them to drugs, but there is a big issue in the industry with predatory behavior, yet that doesn't seem to concern them. She was 14 when we started the show. I was like 19, right? Right. And they're like, okay, you guys are going to be making out in this scene. And I'm like thinking like, wait, this is like slightly illegal, right? I was going to say that's right? probably your first kiss ever, right? It was my first kiss. Why is someone bet you made with Danny about our first kiss? No, it wasn't the first kiss. <laughs> no, it was like ahead, a second or third kiss. It was the first, it was like the first week. No, it was not the first week. Whatever, let me tell you what All happened. Right, what no, let no, me tell no, you what happened. No, no, okay, yeah. so I've never kissed yeah. a guy. So okay. I was, I was so, I mean, you know, Ash was attractive and yeah. I was a 14 year old little girl and I was extremely scared for my life. Sure. And it, he, he was very nice about it. He was like, oh, don't worry. So I was like, okay. Some people could write that off as playful fun. I mean, they were betting 10, 20 bucks against each other to see if Ashton would kiss her. But in hindsight, it's a little bizarre knowing what we know now. It gets really gross too, because Mila shares that he never actually got his tongue in her mouth. And Rosie O'Donnell, I guess, was joking about the fact that maybe Mila used her uh, teeth to block his tongue. It's just really weird to think about. Then Danny goes and goes, dude, I'll give you $10 if you French kiss her. What would you stick my stick your tongue in my mouth or some? What? No, 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 no. For ten dollars. You're making it sound like it was like really. Uh, it, okay, Dan, we had a little side bet yeah, going. Yeah. Like, Which was? It wasn't very As to whether or not, you know, like you know, you're kissing on the show or boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. You would use tongue, right, Rosie? I, I mean, you would. You, you, it I depends mean, what kind of an actor you are. I guess. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So Danny bets me like 20 bucks that I wouldn't do it. And of hey. course I'm like, yeah, sure, what's the deal? You and know? then the cop showed up and he got arrested <laughs> pretty much. They but should he never, have, he but never they did it. And he I so did He I claims so did. to this day he did that. I swear, I swear. Mila, never, I so did it. He never did it? I, I didn't so let did him. It. I think he tried, but uh, I think no, I kept my mouth so yeah, come on. Yeah. He, you did the old teeth block? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you didn't let him do the teeth block. You were like, oh, you Yes, he never got his You were good. Ashton, just admit it. She Dad, didn't come I back. Swear. She's 14. No. She did it. You stop it. She would know that was not the first. You had turned 15 by then. No, she was 12, oh, but yes, I know 15. it. There's a big difference. That one year makes the whole world change. Social media users resharing the interview clip on platforms this week have expressed disgust about the bet and the fact that it happened when Mila was underage. This person writes, Ashton and Danny betting $10 for a grown man to stick his tongue in a child's mouth, knowing it was her first kiss and she had to do it for the show, is literally so disgusting. This person writes, they had an on-screen kiss and Danny bet Ashton $20 to surprise French kiss her. Producers should have been arrested. And that's kind of like, I mean, kind of facts, because when you are a child actor, you're supposed to have some type of advocate there for you. So where was the guardian or the parent or the manager protecting her from these guys? I'm worried about you on the show because you keep... Cause Boy, I'm what? Because I'm the on the show? I think so. I know. And it's I, upsetting to my parents as well. I Off camera, I know you're such a nice lady. Thank you're you. You're what, you're all of 19. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and you're, you're in the show, though. You're, you're just I'm hot. the one who's kissed every single guy in the show except for Topher. Except for Topher Grace. And, yeah, and in fact, I've kissed Laura's boyfriend, Chris. 
who guest starred on our show. So I've kissed the Mastersons. I've kissed everybody. That's so wrong, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. It's quite wrong. Yeah. And what do the writers? They just throw. You, they don't care. No, they really just. I don't know what they're thinking. I have no choice but you know, to just kiss every man on the show. I would there's another creepy clip going around of Ashton Kutcher talking about Hillary Duff and the fact that he was waiting for her to turn 18. This is such a weird statement that's been made in, you know, pop culture history for quite some time. Nowadays, people don't really say this, but it's weird when these grown men talk about these young girls turning 18 and how they've been waiting for that moment. Here's a clip of Ashton making that kind of statement about Hillary Duff. Hillary Duff is in Lizzie McGuire. She also has an album out. Um, she's going to be in a movie called Cheaper by the Dozen. And she's one of the girls that we're all waiting for to turn 18 along with the Olsen twins. Any 15 year old so now back to present time, because a lot of people are upset with Ashton and Mila because they do a lot of advocacy for human trafficking. So how are they working on this yet supporting someone who commits such heinous acts? Well, they are trying to push it off and claim that Danny's family reached out to them and they asked them to write character letters to represent that person. Mila wrote that the letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read and not to undermine the testimony of of the victims or re-traumatize them in any ways. These two actually put out a video message addressing everything and here's what they had to say. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual truly believe the intentions behind these letters i'm calling bs because i know that they knew exactly what he was in trouble for when they wrote them and now there are more people coming out and slamming them even after this video apology and christina ricky has a lot to say she shares people we know as awesome guys can be predators and abusers it's tough to accept but we have to if we say we support victims women children men boys then we must be able to take this stance i have seen christina ritchie's story and i'll tell you why i absolutely loved it she's referring to ashton kutcher and mila kunis and their support letter but she also posted it hours after this apology video now christina ritchie has been in the industry since she was a child so i can't even imagine the amount of things she's seen been around been through and last year she did an interview with a hollywood reporter she talked about how she styled her clothing and how she never dressed a certain way because she didn't want to get that kind of attention. And even without dressing that way, she said, I always felt that kind of attention in a very threatening way. So I'm sure for Christina Ritchie, it's probably triggering for her to not only find out that Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis wrote the support letter, but that they came out with their their video. And that's why I love what she wrote because she addressed her points without having to criticize them and it allows them to read this with an open mind. I'm glad that she's calling them out and they're not just getting away with an easy apology because this really does speak to their character and their like beliefs or their their mission to go and save victims because it doesn't really sound like they support victims. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below and I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye guys.